yes, we all know you can take this tab and make it thicker to make it stronger. We also know that you can reorient it to make it stronger. That is not what we're talking about in this video. We're gonna talk about something interesting about how to make a tab of part like this that's mounted to a wall actually strong so that these holes do not split out. Okay, so what is the scenario? Well, a lot of people want to mount parts to the walls, 3D printed parts to the walls. You might wanna run screws into them. You might wanna put up a handle. You might wanna just mount up an electrical enclosure or something. And people will always print a part in this orientation with the layers going up, screw it into the wall, and then very promptly have the layer lines break out and split along the holes. So what are ways of getting rid of that? Well, it's important to understand the mechanism that's happening here. You're dealing with the layer adhesion of the part. Can those layer lines stay stuck together strong enough in order to not split when put under pressure? This is based on the adhesion of the material itself, but also the surface contact area. Now, this is a design video, so we're gonna talk about surface contact area. If you have more contact between the layers, you will have stronger layers. So let's go ahead and look at the very first version of that. The simplest way of doing this is actually to just put threads in the holes, which seems counterintuitive because because they can introduce stress concentrations. But what you are also doing is increasing the length of the layers right next to the hole where the pressure is. So there's more surface contact area around the hole. Threads are basically a way to thicken the walls around the hole so that now you have more material around the hole where a crack can start. That's a very simple way to model it. But it's not the best way because like I say, all of those are points inside of the hole. And when you have a point right up against some piece of force, it can cause a crack that then propagates through the rest of it. So what are some other ways of getting this? Done. Well, you can thicken, you just don't have to thicken the entire thing. You can extrude the area around the hole and either deepen the area around the hole so that that hole is supported by material just locally around it, which can be very helpful because now you have more contact area, but you've also increased the space for infill. So it can be a little bit of a double-edged sword. A way of fixing this is to, instead of simply having an offset, is to just put rings around the hole. And now you're wrinkling the front surface to where if any crack formed, it would have to go through all of that space before it gets to the main of the part holding it up. And those rings are very simple to model. They are still just the simple offset, but with a few more indents into them. But ultimately what they can do is just create some structure around the hole. So there's just more material there holding the hole together. And this can be incredibly useful. There's a few other ways of doing this. You don't necessarily have to use circles. Everything splits in just this direction. So you can create kind of linear solutions to it where you have just struts right alongside that are very localized area of thickness so that they has to split through this whole big old thick area of material before splitting into the rest of the part. And again, this can be easier to model and can be useful in particular sort of use cases. But all of those are external features. Sometimes you still need the thing to be flat and you just want it to be solid in that area. Now, most people would say you would use a slicer for this, but a slicer is a wrong sort of tool for this because you should be able to create a model for an object and then send it to machinery and have any piece of machinery make that model to spec without having to worry about settings or materials or the rotation of the earth, which is what you do when you start messing with slicer settings. Because one slicer will slice differently from another, one machine will print differently from another, one material will print differently than another. So if you're using slicer settings, they're very fragile, but if you design these types of features into your parts, they can work anywhere, anytime, at any scale, always. So what I would like to do is model in to the part ways to make sure that it is solid around the hole. And the way you do that, you cut up the part. This is gonna sound counterintuitive, but what you can do is around the hole, basically just put a disc and you cut it so that it's like a 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter thick cut. And what it does is it just induces any slicer to create walls around that area, which are not viewed from the outside. So if you have a one millimeter thick wall and a two millimeter thick part, and you create a small cut between the middle of it, you just created a solid part. So what I like to do is put these discs around holes, and now you're able to create a fully solid area around that part. It's not a lot of extra modeling. It's a lot stronger, and it's a lot more controllable because it will work on any machine or material without having to redo all your slicer settings. And if you want to, if you want to do this over a thicker part and that kind of stuff, you can just repeat that pattern over and over again and you create these solid rings around your hole. You do want them to be vertical because you want the layers to go along it. You don't really want to do holes all the way around or those types of micro features, which you might use in other scenarios. For these, you just want a small cut, little slats inside of your part and it creates something that can be really, really strong because you are creating a lot more surface area, basically a solid printed part that is pressed together and you're able to use any slicer anytime, anywhere and no one ever sees that you did it. So now, instead of giving people a big old recipe of how to make the part, you can just hand over the part and that part will be made perfectly every time. 
And this is why it's so important to create it, because if you want to mass produce these parts or send them to a manufacturer, you want it to be made the way you anticipate. And slicer settings don't do that. So for using portals where you can just upload a model and start selling in like 30 seconds, it's really important to just upload a model and get what you want and get it selling in 30 seconds without needing modifiers or your particular material or your particular brand. If you model it in specifically into the part, the part will always be what you want and you don't have to worry about any of the other details. This makes a part that is really easy to manufacture, really robust, and is way more affordable too because there's a lot less work to keep it straight. So hopefully this has been a good demonstration of how to design side mount holes that are actually sort of strong rather than just 3D printed layer splitting problems. You don't want to perforate your 3D printed part. You want to reinforce your printed part. And these are a number of different ways of re reinforcing those types of holes. If there's other sorts of features that you want to see us kind of design and break down about how to make them better using 3D printing to produce those actual products, comment down below and we'll try to hit them up in a future video. Have a great day, everybody. Walls too thin, that's a weak foundation. One mil thick, that's the right equation. Point four nozzle, stack it up twice. Point eight wide, now that's precise. 